You're listening to the Water Cooler Edit with Chris and Rich. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Water Cooler Edit with my Beaut. On this episode of the podcast, Rich is missing. Well, he's not missing, actually. He's actually enjoying a lovely holiday in the United Kingdom, and he somehow left the weather here with us. It's not, uh, sun- it's not sunny at all outside, actually. It's a bit gloomy, uh, but uh, no doubt when you listen to this, it's sun. A lot of sun. It's probably 50 degrees outside. Uh, with Rich away, we have a very special guest with us here today. And I do consider you as a special guest, Remia. Thank you so much for joining us. And Remia pretty much does everything here in the marketing department of Beirut. She's here before we all are here in the office. She's here after we leave. I don't know if she does say, sleep in the office. I've never seen a bed. So, Remia, what are your secrets? Thank you. Thank you for that kind introduction, Chris. And I'm thrilled to be on the podcast. Uh, uh, I know Rich is not here, but I hope to fill in uh, his shoes and uh, talk to you about what's happening in Dubai. Yes, yeah, so we've got some very interesting things happening. Probably one of the biggest things, and I think we briefly touched about this before in another special episode when we had Saha come on board, was Search 2.0, or was it 2.0? I never remember which is the correct I think we're, we're calling it Search 2.0 and Search 2.0 because, you know, inclusivity, whatever works for you. Yes, we're very excited about this feature. Extremely groundbreaking. It's going to change a lot of things with property search. So I'm personally very excited about this one. It is a revolutionary feature. I know I think I used the same word as you did last time and I know Emma was throwing it around in the live stream they did a couple of weeks ago. It is a very revolutionary feature. I mean, it's a whole new way to search for your next property. Yeah. So I think it is, like you said, revolutionary because we're changing the way property search is perceived because previously we'd always only think of entering one location. So you might have always imagined, I want to live in the marina and thought, okay, this is where I want to live. And you look for properties in in that area within your budget. But the reality is that we all live lives where we need to get to places. And sometimes that's work, sometimes that's your kid's school, sometimes that's the gym, depending on your interests. So it's not just the only location that you're interested in that you should be factoring into your home search. And especially with petrol prices being what it is now, I think people are more conscious about the amount of time they're spending in travel. So Search 2.0, essentially, like you rightly said, Chris, it's basically giving you the opportunity to search with two points of interest. So if you want to look at which properties or which areas would be ideal for you to travel to work and the kids' school, you can pop in both those locations And it's essentially going to give you a list of properties which are close to A and B. So if you add a C option, does that mean we'll be search 3.0? Oh, we'll have to ask the product team about that. And that's an interesting one. And maybe we should pitch it to them. So that's a product they can work on. Every time we introduce a new area that you can search for when you're using the new search function, depending on if you want to go to the school, that's like, say, point two, then point three could be the supermarket, point four could be what do people do in their daily lives? Because all I do is go to work and go home, that's it, or I order <laughs> video games, that's about it. I don't think that's a normal life, is it? But you could pop in the video game store as your fourth option. and You could potentially look at properties that are close to your hobbies. Okay, because I'm looking at moving out anyway now, so this is probably a good time to use this feature. Granted, I'm going to definitely stay where I'm living at the moment because it's a 20-minute drive to work and there's barely any traffic, so I've got to stay in the same area. But still, very useful. Very useful. And you think this is probably the best area for you because it's 20 minutes, but what if you pop in those two locations and you get something that's 10 minutes away and within your budget? So it gives you the gift of choice, essentially. And you can explore more options which you perhaps weren't thinking of before. That's a good point. I mean, there are certain places that are closer, although I know the traffic hotspots, especially about 9 a.m. to about 6 p.m., those two times are nightmare to get around. Last thing I want to do is sit in traffic because you waste waste fuel and you get irritated. All you want to do when you you just want to get to the office and you just want to leave the office, that's what you want to do. You don't want to sit around in traffic. Busy lives. We lead very busy lives. But something that kind of caters towards now, I guess you could say a busy-ish lifestyle, is these collaborations that have been going around, right? So there have been a number of them that have popped up over the past couple of months, really. This is kind of a new innovation that's kind of happened, especially here in the United Arab Emirates. And probably the most particular one that caught our eye is Ravidas, as you coined <laughs> the term earlier today. This collaboration that happened between one of the most iconic restaurants here in the United Arab Emirates. And yes, I do agree with that statement because I enjoy the restaurant a lot. And Adidas shoes. I don't wear Adidas, but they do make good shoes. So it's a perfect combination, isn't it? And we've seen basically people buy the shoes mm-hmm. and list them for sale pretty much immediately because yeah. you know they're limited run they're limited stock so of course there is somewhat of a demand for these things and also when they open the door at 4 a.m in the morning the last thing you want to do is get out of bed at 4 a.m to wait for a pair of shoes that may or may not fit that's my struggle at least in life 
I have, I think, a 47 size shoe. It's impossible to buy shoes. <laughs> I asked people online, I said, do you have any of these Ravidas in 47? They all said, no, we didn't pick up that size. Well, if anyone's listening and has that size, you've got a buyer. So you've definitely got that cash in the bank. I think very interesting topic, right? Collaboration. And we've seen a lot of brands do that of late. And obviously in the region, the one that's made a lot of noise is the Ravi X Adidas. And I think one of the things that as we get more connected as a world, bringing these kind of things together and seeing where there's a fit for two brands to work together is interesting. And I think they've done a really cool thing by playing on your nostalgia and highlighting what really makes Dubai so very special. You've got global behemoth like Adidas and you've got a homegrown success story like Ravi coming together and doing something that is kind of a celebration of what that restaurant stands for everybody, right? So like you said, you have very positive memories of that restaurant. And I know a lot of people who, you know, drive down from Abu Dhabi to have a meal at Ravi because it's something they've always done. So they've played on that nostalgia and they've, they've partnered together and made something that is newsworthy. And you also mentioned limited. And I think in this world where everything is commoditized, limited becomes interesting collector's editions and those kind of things. There's a lot of value attached to that. So I'm not surprised that even though the stores opened at 4 a.m., there were people lined up to buy whatever was available. The inventory kind of sold out very quickly because people want to grab their hands on things that are going to outlive that moment. And I think Ravi was very aware of that. They've grown beyond being just a restaurant in Dubai and they've become part of the cultural phenomenon that is Dubai, right? So very interesting. And I know there's a lot of uh, conversation around the secondary market for luxury limited edition goods. And if there's a buyer, people are going to find ways and means to reach that Of course, buyer, right? it's always so, a thing, right? I, I'm a collector myself of video games, uh, not so much nostalgic, but kind of a different side of things. And I get a lot of slack for it. But the ideology is, that one day they might be worth a lot of money <laughs> to some people because there's always a niche market. There's always yeah. going to be no matter what it is. There's somebody that's going to collect it. There's somebody that's going to like it. And it's hard to say as well, but there is somebody that will pay the price because they will want it that badly. I mean, you see some of the, some things go for ridiculous amounts of money. Remember the dude who Absolutely. stuck a banana to the wall with a piece of duct tape and he got, what, millions of pounds? Yeah. If I tried that in the office, I got the dirty look and I was told to clean it up when it fell on the floor. <laughs> Yeah, they say if you build, people will come. So I think it's essentially that there's always an audience for everything. And it's incredible. I think it's incredible that Ravi's grown beyond what it started off as. And it's amazing to see those kind of stories from Dubai. Obviously, one of the biggest collaboration that's happened recently is, of course, Bayou and Dubizzle, hasn't it? 2020. Absolutely, yeah. The UAE's, I guess, biggest collaboration yeah, of two of the Yeah, the merger is a classic example, right? Like bringing talent together, bringing ideas together and collaborating on that level. It's so good for the greater good, right? So absolutely. And I think over the years, we've kind of found that sort of comfortable relationship as Bayou and Dubizzle, growing stronger together, as we say. So yeah, exciting. Collaborations are always exciting. Was that a Hot Fuzz reference that you <laughs> just threw in there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the only movies that I've ever watched, because anyone who knows me knows that I don't watch <laughs> movies at all, so I'm happy I got that reference. <laughs> But of course, the final talking point that we've got here is the summer camp. Yep. You know, we talked about it in the previous episode, but now it's in full swing. And I cannot Absolutely. believe how many candidates we had. I mean, we had well over 100. We had people still messaging us after registrations had closed. And the, I mean, yeah. it was fantastic to see. We've got phone calls, we've got emails, messages, DMs, you name it. We've even had someone contact me on WhatsApp about it because they're a friend of a friend. <laughs> and then they said, oh, yeah, I know your mom or I know, I know this guy, he gave you a number and he, you work here. And you've got some summer camp, can I join? So the response has been absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it has been fantastic. And it's so nice to see because often we think of words like collaboration and opportunity as buzzwords. But when you really make use of them, they can really be transformational, right? So here we're creating an opportunity for youngsters, right? So you've got, I think when I always think of what I felt like when I was a teenager, I was so confused. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I watched a lot of movies and decided I wanted to be a journalist. And I had really no realistic idea about what working as a journalist would feel like. So eventually when I got into the workplace, very early on, I realized mm, this is probably not my cup of tea. At that point, when I was a teenager and, you know, having these fantasies about how I was going to change the world as a journalist, if I had a bit of a reality check and had the opportunity to work in an actual professional environment, I might have changed my decisions. 
And essentially, we wanted to give these young people that opportunity to be able to come in and see what a corporate environment looks like, to see if the path they've always believed they want to be on is is what they want to be on, and also have some fun with it, right? Like for us as brands, as Bayouth and Tabezel, uh, talking to youngsters gives a whole new perspective, and it opens up so many opportunities for us as well. Because these guys are not jaded; they're very fresh. They have a lot of enthusiasm. and limitless i remember the last time around as well we had some extremely talented youngsters join us and it was a blast to host it and i'm really excited we've got a whole bunch of teenagers with us for this summer camp and everyone is so full of ideas and enthusiasm and just wanting to make a difference and it's exciting to be in that company it certainly is and we saw as you said it was interesting to watch the kids come in and think again i shouldn't really refer to them as kids the young adults aren't they from the ages of 15 mm. to 18 to me it feels like an eternity ago but They are certainly young adults, <laughs> and it was interesting that you said that they came into the uh, summer camp thinking, "Oh, I want to work in this department." You know, I'm a big fan of marketing or design. But as they learned and they worked alongside the various different departments, we saw how they changed their minds. We saw a shift in their focus as well. Absolutely, a big money speaks, right? I think what happens is that again, you become sort of you have tunnel vision when you always believe, "Oh, I've always believed I need to do marketing." So you kind of close your mind off to other possibilities. And when you come in to this kind of an environment, environment where you get to spend time with the different departments you have the opportunity to open up and accept the maybe other strengths that you have yeah and it's also a great way to beat the heat isn't it as well that it's so warm outside at the moment but it warm is probably definitely the right word to it is too hot outside that's for sure yeah but remia thank you so much for joining me on this i'm going to say it's another special episode because rich isn't here do join us whenever you feel comfortable it's great to have more faces and voices on the podcast <laughs> as well Thank uh, you so much Chris. I hope I did rich some justice and you know I've replaced the rich in Chris and Rich but I hope I did some justice and it was great to join the podcast and I look forward to hearing more we, from we, you guys. We we at least kept the same first letter. We did. We did yes. the R. We did the R. Yeah. So if I ever go on leave, who's going to replace me, I wonder? Every other Chris in the office is probably a candidate. So there's only one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Water Cooler Edit with my beaut Of course, if you want to learn more about the things we've been discussing, check out the My Bayut blog. That is bayut.com forward slash My Bayut. I got it right this time. Thank you so much. We'll Thank you, you guys. Soon. Thank you, everyone. You're listening to the Water Cooler Edits with Chris and Rich.